Hello and welcome inside the Sports Sermon. I am Dylan Staggy here today with Jason Gandhi and Dan Majors, and we have a pretty special NBA episode to bring you guys today. Uh, but first, we've made a little bit of a change. You might have seen in the past, uh, this summer, we had some cool graphics and uh, some designs uh, on our, uh, some highlights to go along with our podcast if you checked it out on Twitter or on YouTube. Uh, but we're going to kind of do away with that because it took a lot of our uh, extra time. And so uh, now we'll be spending that extra time trying to find some more fun stuff to put on social media to share with you guys. So make sure you guys follow us on, at The Sports Sermon on Twitter. But today we have some Game 2 analysis, Game 3 predictions, and obviously some NBA rumors as we do every episode. So let's get into Finals Game 2. We'll start off with a recap from Jason. Yeah, the Warriors won 122-103 to at home Sunday night. Curry led the way with 33 points, including a Finals record 9 three-pointers, as well as Durant and Clay both chipping in 20-plus. Golden State is now 4-0, and and Curry, Durant, and Clay Thompson all score 20-plus. For the Cavs, LeBron looked tired and had an off night for him, but still impressive of 29 points on 10 of 20 shooting to go along with 9 rebounds and 13 assists. Surprise, no one else stepped up besides half of Kevin Love, and the starters were taken out with about four minutes left as the Cavs conceded and focused on the home court game on Wednesday. So my question to you guys is what surprised you most about last night's game? Um, honestly, nothing for me. I mean, LeBron was great. Cavs were bad except for Love, and the Warriors were the Warriors. I mean, Steph surprised me a little by how well he played, but I mean, we're, we all know that he's capable of that. So, um, Yeah, what surprised me the most was that the Cavs survived most of the game on a really good shooting night uh, from the Warriors. I mean, halfway through the third quarter, it was a five point game, uh, but the Cavs obviously couldn't keep it up for too long and got demolished in the fourth quarter, ended up losing by 19. Yeah, my biggest surprise is really how effective the Warriors' bench is. Livingston and McGee both didn't miss. David West hit the biggest three of the game, and we know the Warriors' stars will show up when they do, but they are hard, and when they do, they're hard to beat. But when the bench does too, they are so tough to play against. Curry obviously had nine threes. Clay Thompson, 34 minutes, 20 points, the high ankle sprain. Durant had a team high nine boards, held LeBron to two of four shooting when he was guarding him. And Draymond had a very balanced game of five, eight, and seven, held the Cavs to six of 15, one of five from three point line as the primary defender. And all of that, along with a dangerous bench, and that's what's crazy about the Warriors. I was just very surprised with Livingston McGee and David West all stepping up. All right, so obviously the Warriors' two best players, Curry and Durant, both played well last night, but who is more important uh, for the Warriors, Curry or Durant? I think it's obviously Steph Curry. He is the fan MVP and the team MVP. When Durant came to Golden State, he was already the second guy to the fans. Like He never was going to come in and be that first guy. Uh, Curry is now the focal point of the offense. We saw early in that Rockets series how they tried to go to Durant a lot, and... It just didn't work out. I mean, that's why they got behind there. Now Curry's back to being the focal point, and I think that's the reason they're so good. Curry, in his last four games versus the first nine games of the playoffs, has increased his touches by 19, has 142 more dribbles, and has over two minutes of more time. Of, and the time of possession is over two minutes longer, and he is just really in control of his offense. Last night, Curry shot six of nine from three off the dribble. All the other ones were four for 13. And this is Curry's team, and it won't change until he retires. Yeah, I totally agree. I, it, it's Steph Curry. I mean, Durant, he didn't even play that well in game one. They still won. So, I mean, if Curry's playing like, like he did last night, then they're just unbeatable. Um, every time the Cavs would make a little run, then Curry was there to hit a three and just steal the momentum right back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's weird because – they don't need both of them to shoot well to win games. They can have one show up and the other not. That's how good the Warriors are as a team. But, I mean, it definitely helps, as we saw last night, as they got the 19-point victory. But I do have, I would have to say Steph Curry. Uh, I mean, the Warriors have fought through some bad Durant performances, like you mentioned, uh, Dan. But I think it's harder for the Warriors to survive uh, 
Steph Curry performance where he's going two for 13 from behind the three-point line uh, or something like that. But Durant's had some bad games, and the Warriors have survived, so I will have to go with Curry. I just feel like, I mean, Dan, you mentioned this a little bit, I feel like Curry and Clay are just so much. Like I honestly think Durant can be even considered like the third guy because – like Clay, he is known for just hitting those shots to stop runs. I mean, Jay Williams today called him what do you call him? Like the silencer or something, or like some basically like he stops all the runs. And like I feel like Curry and Clay are the reason this team started because they were the Splash Brothers. And like I feel like people want to give it to Kevin Durant because he's the new hot piece. But like Curry and Clay are what make the engine run. And Draymond's got the defense and the energy. Like I think Durant was what made them from great to maybe best ever. But like you can't discount Curry, Clay, and and Draymond, I feel like it's so easy to when you have a guy like Kevin Durant. I think people do, though, because of the Warriors' performance last year in the finals and how just good KD was, yeah. how he looked like he was coming out to play every single game, and obviously he got the finals MVP. He was amazing. but And, like, the last memory we have of the Warriors in the finals is them losing in the 3-1 lead without Kevin Durant. Like, mm-hmm. the last game we saw without Kevin Durant on the Warriors was them the game seven when they lost. And I think that, like, almost subconsciously just, like, left a bad taste. And so now you just don't even, like, think they were that good when, like, they were the best regular season team ever mm-hmm. by stati- statistically. So I just feel like they get overlooked a lot, especially Draymond and Clay. Like, it's so easy to be like, oh, it's Curry and Kevin Durant, and that's basically it. But, like, Clay and Dre made that a 73-win team along with Steph Curry. Yeah. All right, so um, what do you guys think changed the most for the Warriors? Uh, in game two versus game one, obviously, uh, game one they struggled for most of the game, but uh, the Cavs just choked it away with a few plays at the end. Played a lot better in game two. What do you think was the reason, Dan? Uh, I'd say it's Durant's play. Um, he played a lot much better, or a lot better. And uh, like last night, he was ten of fourteen from the field. In game one, he was eight of twenty-two and one of seven from three. So shooting was a lot better. And then defense was a lot better last night, also guarding um, LeBron. Uh, I mean, he still LeBron still got his shots, but he had to pass out a lot more than he would um, in game one. See, I thought it wasn't even anything the Warriors did. I, th- I mean, there was stuff the Warriors did, obviously, but I thought it was the Cavs' defense was just horrendous. Cavs contested 52% of the Warriors' shots compared to 62% in game one. So that means just under half their shots are uncontested. Like, that is awful and on curry's threes he was four of six in transition from the three-point line all were uncontested and then he was four of nine on contested attempts five of eight on uncontested attempts so in just his threes alone he only had one less uncontested attempt and almost hit the same percentage like they just aren't a good defensive team that's something we hear all in the regular season and that's easy to forget about it in the playoffs when they start winning but like they are so bad defensively. And it's guys like George Hill, Jordan Clarkson, Kyle Korver, J.R. Smith. Those guards, like, there's such a difference with what Curry's had to deal with. He's got them when he had to deal with Drew Holiday in the series before. And then he Chris had Paul. Chris Paul. And then, uh, I mean, heck, even Tony Parker. Like, you just got those guys where, like, it's different. And I feel like he's, like, licking his lips a little bit with having George Hill and J.R. Smith as the guards that to guard him. And that was, what I think, the biggest issue for Cleveland is they just cannot defend anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to talk about a couple of adjustments that the Warriors made. First of all, like, Durant has been, all playoffs, has been, like, uh, what I call the launcher for the Warriors, shooting 20 to 25 shots a game and trying to open up Steph and Clay and the rest of the offense for the Warriors. But last night... The Warriors let Steph Curry do that instead. He shot 26 shots, and Durant only had 14. And I think that really benefited both of them. Obviously, Curry was on fire. He made 9 of 17 threes, broke the record for most threes in a finals game, and allowed Durant to be a lot more efficient and opened him up as he made 10 of his 14 shots. And then another adjustment, I think that was kind of underrated for the Warriors, they gave JaVale McGee uh, Kavon Looney's role that he's been playing all of the Rocket series in the end game one of the uh, finals, uh, they gave JaVale McGee uh, his kind of defensive uh, role mostly, and I think it worked a lot better for them, his challenging of LeBron at the rim and being a better lob target than Kevon Looney on offense uh, really helped the Warriors, especially in the first half, um, and allowed, like, LeBron, he really didn't finish as well at the rim last night, and I think... Uh, a big reason for that was JaVale McGee being inside instead of 
loony. Yeah, I have that down later to talk about, but I mean, that's a good point about how, I mean, I don't. he didn't shoot well at the rim, but he also didn't get to the rim as much. The Warriors, by throwing guys like Looney, McGee, Jordan Bell, and then Draymond, Kevin Durant, still long, big guys, being able to stop them like that, they all, and even David West, I think, played over 10 minutes, and obviously the big three, but like the, all those guys are such a vital role, and we saw it in the Celtics series, when they could put Horford and Baines and all those big guys out there, it limited his drivability, and I have a stat later, let me go find it, He LeBron, when he has to shoot outside the lane, is just so much, like, he's such a different player, I have to find it real fast, he's 8 for 22 last night, when not driving to, the, or not last night, all together, This when he's not driving to the basket in the half-court offense this series. Like, that is such a big difference that if they can get big guys to stop him from moving towards uh, moving downhill and getting to the lane, it's a completely different game, and the Warriors will kill them game in and game out. So those bigs, I thought, were a huge piece to the reason they won. All right, let's move on to the Cleveland side, though. How would you guys evaluate their supporting cast uh, in Game 2? I mean, I thought it was bad. Kevin Love had 22 points, but on 18 shots. George Hill had 15 points on 12 shots. J.R. Smith shot 2 of 9. Uh... Corver shot 0 for 3. Jeff Green shot 2 for 7. It's just bad, and, like, I'm tired of the discussion of will the role players step up. When are they going to step up? Like, they don't. They're bad. Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance came over in the trade. Clarkson has not looked good. Nance has never been a scorer. Like, it's just not they're not going to step up. It's all on LeBron and kind of Kevin Love, but like I said, he took 18 shots to get to 22. Yeah, that's true. He was, he was all right. Uh, he had 13 of his 22 in one quarter. Yeah. Um, George Hill, he was all right, but took some questionable shots. Mm -hmm. And then Jr., you can tell it's in his head, in my opinion, at least. I don't think he will ever be the same. At least, uh, I at least to, like this year. He will I wanted to see the opposite. I was really hoping we'd see like pissed off Jr., where he's yeah, coming out shooting no. from fifty-five yeah. feet, but he's hitting them all like just like <laughs> stupid-minded, but like unconsciously good shooting Jr. That's what I thought we'd see, and he was just yeah. irrelevant. Like, yeah. yeah, he didn't play well, except for he was the MVP according to the Warriors. Yeah, I mean, he definitely was. But um, <laughs> I mentioned that on this podcast before the game. I said, that's why I wore the jersey when we did that. It was about because he was the MVP for the Warriors. Yeah, I mean, the Cavs are just really bad last night. I mean, they had a good third quarter. Dan mentioned that with Kevin Love. That was his quarter. But besides that, uh, the Cavs were just uh, very bad. They didn't look engaged in defense as much as they did in game one. And the difference in this game was that the Cavs were worse on defense than in game one, yeah. and LeBron did not play perfect as he did in game one. Uh, I wasn't impressed with yeah. LeBron. I mean, Dan, you said LeBron played really good. I thought he like he played good like as an, for like a fine player, but like LeBron standards. I was not impressed. He just looked like uninterested the entire game. I mean, yeah, but we expect so much. From I I mean, yeah, I talked about that later too. How like it sounds stupid to say that, but right. like but it he, just was. Eh, he I don't passed know. out a lot more than he did. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, he did have thirteen assists. Thirteen assists, and that doesn't even count. But you can't win with thirteen assists. On, so. like, you just gotta, you gotta have, you gotta go score the ball. They need him to score. They don't have offense without him. Yeah. All right. So, uh, going into game three, uh, which role player needs to step up the most for the Cavs for them to get back in the series? Uh, I look at a guy like Jeff Green. There's many times that he is wide open for a three off of a kickout from LeBron, and he's got to knock those down. He's one of eight from three in the series so far. Uh, his defense has been all right, but he, along with everyone else, has got to be able to hit that three off of a kickout from LeBron. I think Je it would be great for the Cavs if Jeff Green would step up, but I think the most realistic uh, would be Kyle Korver, because if the Cavs want to get back in the series, they have to shoot a barrage of three-pointers, and they have to make a ton to... And Kyle Korver, I think, is the best uh, guy that's fit out for that role. I mean, obviously, guys like Jeff Green, uh, if they can get Rodney Hood some minutes, if J.R. Smith can find his groove back, they all need to hit some threes because yeah. if not, the Cavs are just not going to be able to score enough to keep up with the Warriors. Yeah, I mean, I'm just tired of this discussion. Like, they don't show up and they never show up. So, like, I just hate, like, every show, like, obviously, including us, we're always talking about, like, who should step up? Who's going to do it in this game? Like, they need to play with some like energy, and they need to act like they're pissed off. No one has looked pissed except for LeBron. Like you look at their faces, and like they're just like, "Oh, whatever, we lost. Like it's fine." Or like, "Oh, we're okay." But like, 
this is the finals. Like, wake up. I don't know. I've been so disappointed with the Cavs because, like, obviously I'm a Laker fan. And, like, I was expecting to see Clarkson play really well, and he's played horrible. And Nance has played well. But, like, just those guys, were, they just look pissed off and play like it. Like, yeah. LeBron is not going to get help at this point. If he didn't get it last night, like, they're not going to get it tomorrow. And, like, they're not going to get it on the road. They're going to have to get it at home. But it's not going to be for any other reason that they're at home. Like, I just am tired of, like, oh, who's going to step up and, like, carry them? Like, no one else is there. Like, they're going to have to deal with whoever can hit four shots instead of three. Like, no one's going to be able to drop 30 for him. All right. Any positives for the Cavs from uh, game two to take into game three? Yeah, I mean, they were in it in both games for a while. Like, obviously, game one, they were in it the whole game. But, like, last night, they were in it. Like, there was, like, six points for, like, most of the game. And it never really blew open until the end. And the guys factually shoot better at home. Like, it's fact. They're going to shoot better Mm -hmm. at home. And so, like, their series isn't over. But just, like I said, play with some energy and play like it's not over. They look like they're already lost. They might as well just stand there. Like, play like it. Yeah, I totally agree. Even though it seemed like the Cavs would never win that game, they still stay competitive. And coming back home, they'll have the crowd on their side, and hopefully they can feed off that when they start making runs and start making shots. Yeah, I mean, my biggest thing is that they're resilient to the Warriors' runs. Like, maybe I'm just used to watching the Rocket series, where if the Warriors would start to get on a run, they would just keep going. Uh, but the Cavs didn't let the Warriors go on any crazy 15-2 sort of runs like that past series. I mean, five or t- six times I was like, oh, no, here comes the Warriors. Uh they're about to go on one of those runs, and the Cavs responded with their own uh, five-point run and made it a game again. So I think if they can hang in it for long enough and then maybe rely on LeBron to carry it up at the end, a couple other guys make a couple threes, and they can steal a game. But um, I think that's really the only thing yeah. positive from these first two games. Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's move into some game three preview. Uh what does LeBron have to do uh, in order for the Cavs to come out with a win? I think he's got to have legacy-defining games. I mean, he went for 51, and they still lost. So, I mean, I think he's got to go for, like, 40-point triple-double, and I think they'll have a chance to win the game. Honestly. Yeah. They just need to, he just needs to play with some freaking energy, not look like he's dead the whole game, and just do his thing. What he did in game one was enough to win. Like, I think everyone can acknowledge that it's enough to win. Yep. And I know it sounds stupid to, like, expect that, but, like, in order to win this series, that is the expectation. You're going to need a game like he had in game one every single game in order to win this series. To win a game, you don't have to play that. Like, he can probably steal a game with a 30-point triple-double when the Warriors get lazy or whatever. But, like, in order to win this series, he's going to need every game to be like that. Mm -hmm. I think if the Warriors play well, he's going to need at least 45-plus and, like, around those triple-double numbers and rebounds and assists, too. Uh, I don't think there's any way, unless the Warriors just play very badly, that he can get away with not scoring more than 40 or 45. Yeah, I just, I think they can win a game without it, but, like, to win the series, he's going to have to, for sure. All right, so obviously the Cavs are going back home for games three and four. How much is that going to play uh, an advantage for them uh, in terms of being able to steal a game? Uh, I mean, it definitely plays a big advantage. Corver shoots 3% better at home and 3% better from, like, three-point line. Kevin Love shoots 3% better from the field at home and 2% better from three. JR shoots 2% better from the field and from the three. So like, they're going to shoot better. LeBron's just got to be rested up and be ready. I mean, game three, game four, games they have to win in order to stay in this, and I think there's a chance they do that. Yeah, I agree, but um, I don't think anyone's really going to give them a chance. Uh, it's still, they're at home, but like, I don't think that's going to change anything. It's still the Warriors and it's still the Cavs. Yeah, I mean, the Warriors have shot well on the road many times before, and they can definitely do it again. Uh, But obviously, it's definitely going to be tougher on the road, and the role players always show up better at home. The thing that makes me think the Cavs can steal a game, uh, even though I'm not too sure, I'm kind of 50-50 on whether they uh, even get a game in this series. Uh, But the way that they've uh, been resilient to the Warriors' runs, especially those big third quarters so far, Plus, being at home, I think that could be a combination for the Cavs to steal a game, even though I'm still kind of wavering on whether they will or not. Yeah, Yeah, like I said in the last podcast, I'm between 5 and 6, and I just, 
Now that it's two, I feel like it's going to be five. But I still think there's a way they can win both at home and keep this a series. I just... I hope so, dude. I, I mean, I, every game's been fun to watch. Not like I've been bored in any game. That's the yeah, thing is, I've like... I've just been mad, like, throughout the game. Though. Like, I want... I don't know. No, I know what you're like, saying. But, like, that's the thing is, it's not like they've been 20-point blowouts. Like, even last night didn't feel like a blowout until the last right. five minutes. Like, every game's been close. Obviously, we're only two in. But, like... I, it sounded like, from like what Dylan was saying, and like ESPN was saying, all these different radio shows, like it wouldn't even be fun to watch. But like it is. And that's what I was yeah. trying to say is like, this isn't going to be a series where every game's a 40 point blowout. Yeah, like, been right so far. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if um, last night's was incredibly fun to watch. Like, it was a close game, it was decent, but the Warriors always had the lead. And, but it was still close, it never got to like and then 15. Like, we didn't have that intense yeah. end of the game situation like you do in game one where the Cavs can I mean, maybe pull it out. But a lot of games not gonna have yeah. that in every game. Though. Like a lot of games. But I wouldn't put that. it in the category of exciting. But I wouldn't put it in the category of boring. It was, it was just a good game. That's what I meant. Like I, was, it was, like, I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> what change are you making if you're Ty Lu going I'm, back home? I'm just saying screw it and getting rid of of J.R. Smith and Jordan Clarkson, throwing them to the bench, putting in Chetty Oseman, or however you say his name, and Rodney Hood. Literally, Rodney Hood was supposed to be the best player in this trade. Larry Nance so far and George Hill have been the best two out of the trade, but Rodney Hood was like the reason this team was going to do it, like all that. Get him in. Obviously, they have a bad relationship, and he's going to be gone after this year. But like, get him in, let him play his game, and get Chetty Oseman who can spot up and hit threes when Corver's not. Like, You have to change the guards up because the guards have just looked terrible. Yeah, I totally agree. I think there's basically almost nothing you can do. But, I mean, if you're Ty Lue, then you got to bench – or not just totally bench him, but you got to give Jr. and Clarkson less minutes. I mean, Dylan, you have the box score popped up. Let's see. I mean – Jr. was 2 of 9. Jr. got 31 minutes. Yeah. Like, give Seti 10 of those. Give Rodney 10 of those. Yeah. And just, like, do a shooting guard by committee. The Warriors are doing a center by committee. Do a shooting guard by committee. I think for Jr. you can um, kind of tell at the beginning of the game how hot he's going to be for the rest of the game. So I think you still got to give Jr. that chance, especially at home where he's so much better than on the road. Uh, but I agree with you guys. You got to put Rodney Hood in the game, and also I think Kyle Korver. And really, you just got to change your game plan to LeBron and threes. That's all. That's the only way that the Cavs can win a game. They have to get hot from three, and LeBron has got to be insane LeBron. <laughs> I mean, I don't think... I think Trish Thompson can be valuable in the series. I think he can yeah. out-rebound JaVale McGee. I mean, the reason they were in it the first game, I don't have it pulled up, but, like, they had, like, 17 offensive rebounds. Like, if they can have Thompson mm-hmm. in... Like, I don't think it has to go, like, small ball. Like, I'm not saying you should put, like... I'm not, saying, I'm not saying small ball. I think uh, Tristan Thompson would be an important part if they had a lineup where they just uh, threw... George Hill, Corver, LeBron, uh, and Tristan Thompson in, and they just went for threes in LeBron. Obviously, Kevin Love would uh, play, but see, like, be a big part yeah. of that too. I think rebounds are an important, are definitely a big part uh, if you're shooting the three ball to try and get those offensive rebounds. But I just don't think the three ball is like as important for the Cavs. Like they're not a good shooting team. Like they have, like they should be. Like the names yeah. are. Like Kyle Korver is a good shooter. Jarrett Smith is a good shooter. Jordan Clarkson even a good shooter. But you're but not like going to keep not. up. You're not going to keep up with the Warriors shooting mid range shots with these guys because they're not any better at mid range. No, I just mean like you just like just run the offense. Like you have Thompson on the block. You have like I think their starting five is fine. I obviously I said I'd change Jr. But like I mean even you like the lineup you just said was basically their starting five. Just Rodney Hood for Jr. Like. I don't know. I don't like think that love. you said you only said four, so I assumed you were having love in there. But like you said, Hill, Hill. James Thompson, and Hood. You didn't name a fifth, so I assumed you meant love. But I mean, I think the smallest I would go if I was them was have love at the center, James at the four. But even that, you're not going to get any rebound production. She's going to hope like heck everything goes in. I mean, I think that's the only hope the Cavs have, in my opinion. Uh, not at home. If this was Game Five at Oracle and you're down three one, maybe, but. I don't think like they're not even like on elimination yet. Like there's no reason to freak out. Just give Rodney Hood some minutes. <laughs> I think we're in all in agreement on that one. All right, so the let's shift over to the Warriors side. Um, do you guys think that they let up now that they're up 2-0? We've seen them do it like in the Rocket series. 
um, many yeah. times before. I mean, we've seen it all season long. That's why I'm a little worried because it's happened all season that we've seen this little foot off the gas. But at the same time, I listened to all the press conferences after every game, and Steve Kerr, Draymond Green, and I think Clay also mentioned it about how this isn't a time to like like get comfortable and start coasting. Like all three of them mentioned it, which means it's definitely on their mind. Which well, means. I think they're going to come out, and hopefully not. But I think they're—I think you'll see it in little spurts. Like the first two minutes might not be great, but they'll turn it right back on. I will say, those guys, I wouldn't be worried about letting up. The guys I'm worried about letting up are Steph and KD. Really? Especially KD. I mean, KD. I don't think it's a matter of him letting up. I think it's just a matter of he's just not sh- like there's not like he's just not playing a good game when he's missing. I don't think it's because like he's trying. I don't know. Like I just feel like. I don't feel like I feel like it's a team versus non-team thing. Like I don't feel like it's individual guys not trying at least. I feel I like it's just like I mean, a team. Draymond's more of a hustle guy, and like if he's not, then... he gets lazy on defense when they when they get comfortable. Draymond gets lazy on defense. Clay doesn't cut as hard. Steph just kind of like dribbles, and Katie looks for ISOs. I mean, they all like tendencies of like, well, we're up, we're good. I, I still think you put Steph and KD on the guys that you have to worry about uh, most. Because, I mean, those are the guys taking the most of their shots anyway yeah. on the offensive side. I mean, maybe, but I doubt, like, both of them are letting down. Yeah, we've never game. seen that. We've so, never I seen mean, one's going to make up for the other. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, like, the Warriors are still good enough that they can let up and still get a win. Like, all it takes is the Cavs to be a little worse than they usually do in the I mean, they're at not home, be... though. They're at home. That's a big thing, though. Is the Cavs are at home and they're gonna shoot better. They're not gonna shoot great. They're gonna shoot better. Like percentage wise, they they do. It happens every time. I mean, that's over a whole season though. I mean, you can't just say that. I mean, over the Celtics one, series, they did for too. For one game, I, I do think they will shoot better. But I'm not saying that you can really just depend on that for both games because the Cavs really need both games. No, too. I'm saying if the Warriors let up, it's not like they're still gonna coast. Like if they let up, they're gonna lose. Like they're gonna have to stay. They put the. Put I don't. The I don't gas. think. They lose, especially because they can show up for 15 minutes a game. You just said you were 50-50 about them losing, dropping a game. And now you're saying that even if they let up, they won't lose. No, I said they they can. They can let up for a game and not lose. I'm not saying they will let up or they will lose. I'm saying they, that it's possible because they can show up for 15 minutes a game and still get a win. That's what they did in the Rocket series. I, I see what you're saying, but... I do, but don't agree. Like, I know what you're yeah. saying. I don't agree, though. I think, and you're playing a team that has the greatest player in the world, if you let up for 5-10 minutes, this game can change drastically. And especially when he's at home, and especially when he's pissed off. Like, Especially I'd... since they've been competitive throughout the whole game. Yeah, it's I mean, not they're like they're blowing them out. Them. Yeah. Like, a six-point game going into the fourth quarter wasn't going in, but like around the fourth quarter, like if you let up, this game will be completely different. And that's why like, I... I don't understand the whole get like getting, like letting the pedal off, like letting it off a little bit. They've done it all serious season. I get the regular season, but once the playoff starts, I just be go go go. It's business time. But I mean, they've done it in the past, and I feel like there's reason to be concerned. I just hope they don't, obviously, and that they get the job done. All right. So LeBron, obviously, has been great as he always is. What uh, can and should Golden State do to slow him down? For the rest of this series. Yeah, we already talked about this, and so I'll keep mine short. Just keep throwing the bigs out there. Have Dre and KD help. Like I said, he's 8 for 22 and not driving to the basket in the half-court offense. Just keep throwing the bigs out there to a center by committee and try to stop him from driving. Yeah, I think, too, basically what you did last night, and like defense was a lot better because uh, he had to kick out a lot more. Uh-huh. Um, Durant played well, and as you said, the bigs. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think you definitely got to throw different def- on-ball defenders at him, too. And especially with Iguodala coming back, oh, that's, that's another true. set of fresh legs. Oh, assuming he's coming back, apparently. There's, there's no pain. But apparently yeah, there's said. no pain. But, <laughs> For the last few days, too. That makes me so mad. Like, if you had no pain yesterday, why the heck aren't you playing? Clay Thompson played with pain. Draymond Green said, like, in his presser, like, to do, like, a two-minute story about how, like, he was convinced Clay wasn't playing. And, like... Clay like, oh, yeah, I'm playing. He's like, oh, it's a joke. Like, he's definitely not playing. And yet he was he out there. That? Draymond. He was saying, like, Clay texted him, like, oh, yeah, I'm playing. He's like, ha, oh, okay. And he, like, he said he even texted Nick Young saying, hey, I need big minutes out of you. Clay's out. Like, we're going to need you to step up. And, like, he was just assuming Clay wouldn't play with a high ankle sprain. Now he's playing. And I, it would all didn't feel pain yesterday. Like, 
I don't know. I, like, like Zach and I said in the last one, I feel like there's more to this story. There has yeah, to be. I mean, uh, it's crazy, though, for Clay. Like, he went 8 for 13. 34 minutes. Played, yeah, 34 That's minutes. That's not nothing. 8 for 13 from the field. So it wasn't like he was bad. Yeah. And uh, I think, I, like, obviously, he wasn't one of the guys that carried him. That was Steph and KD, so he doesn't get a lot of the attention. But he still had 20. Yeah, yeah. He, he's not getting a lot of the attention, but big props to him for playing for it's- that. That was funny. And the presser when there was dude, I forget who it was, Mike something. He was the same dude that pissed off LeBron the night before. He like asked his question. He said something to Steve Kerr like I forget how he phrased it, but he said something along the lines of like Clay was hurt and then you got thirty four out of him and Steve Kerr's like, Clay had thirty four? He's like No, he's like, I don't think he did in the checks box for his Yeah, he had 20 and he's like oh no 34 minutes like it's just so weird like like the yeah, dude has been reporters. no it's the same dude it's mike schwartz i think from espn he's from espn and he is just so oh my gosh like when he asks questions i'm like cringing i'm like stop yeah. asking questions it's so bad also I, another dude calls draymond draymond and clay correct him like he's like so draymond he's like draymond and he's like draymond he's like Draymond it is so <laughs> funny. I love listening to him because these reporters are so weird. Can we? Can they send like us out to report or something? For real, I'll ask better <laughs> questions yeah. and call them by the right right name. I promise you that. I'll know all of their names. Jeez, Draymond. All right. Anyway, uh, does Cleveland have a chance in the series? And do you guys think that LeBron has given up? Yes, and yes. I think yes, they have a chance, and yes, he's given up. Yes, Cleveland whoa, 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 whoa. can. I'll that explain. I'll explain. That does not You're gonna. Make sense. I mean, I'm gonna explain. Hold on. Cleveland can definitely win this. They haven't lost at home, as I've said three times on here. That series doesn't start until it's game. someone loses at home. They're definitely still in this. They stay close for a majority on the road. They're gonna shoot better. Blah 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 blah. LeBron though looks like he is so ready for this season to end, and he is so checked out. If oh, you on, watch certain weird, points yeah. of the game and against the Celtics and like all these games, he just like looks at his teammates like, what the hell am I working with? Like, it just, they are so bad, and he knows it. And, like, he looks like he hates his teammates. He, like, he looks angry that he's there. And, like, I think that was a question in the press. where like, does this ruin the competition? And he said, no, obviously he's not going to say that. But, like... I think it's a very fair point to mention that he looks as if he's given up. He's not playing like he's given up, but, like, just the little things. Like, when he puts a towel over his face and, like, drops his head. And, like, he just looks pissed and, like, he's ready to get out of Cleveland. So, I think he's gone. By the way, I've been watching this Warriors and and Celtics series. Well, I I think it's one game. One game against the Celtics, he did look like that, and then he responded and still won the series. But it's the Celtics. It's not the Warriors. Like, they won't be able to – like, he's still got to – I don't know. I just yeah. That's like, why I think the Warriors win. Well, yeah, I know you do. I'm just saying though. Like, it's not like the Celtics and Warriors are like easy. Like, they're not like they're not equal. It's not like oh, you can take a game off. That's what I'm saying. Like, he couldn't take a game off, and he did. Like, he knows the Celtics and Warriors are different competitors. Mm-hmm. You can't take a game off against the Warriors, and he did. That's my point. Okay. okay. Um, well, I got four words for you. Suck Never count out LeBron. I think you say the game. Same thing I, I said. Fun, but... Same exact thing I said. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Never count out, dude. Down three one. Came back against the seventy three. All right. All right. I mean, yeah, Kyrie. Okay. A lot different yeah. than he is now, but I know what you're saying. I'm with you. I have obviously agree with you. I think they. I said they're going the farthest as any of you guys. I said six. And you said five. They've been competitive. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's not over. I don't think it's over. It's far from over. False. It's over. It's not over. All right. What's your prediction, Dylan? I'm still going to say I'm going to stick with Warriors in four, but um, the way the Cavs have competed does give me a little bit of hope that they can win one of the game, games three or four. But I, I don't think LeBron has given up on this series. If like you had I to said, put money on it, who you put money on? For game three? Yeah. With the line. Oh, it's the line. I don't know. I'm just asking. Like, probably 10 or 11 like it has been. Uh, 10 or 11, I'll, I'll definitely take the Cavs. It's five and a half. For the oh, Warriors. wow. Okay, five and a half. Who are you taking? Um, five bucks on the line. I'll take the. Ah, uh, man, that's close. I, I think I'll take the Cavs because I do think that they're they're right. still some. We're gonna chance. verify this on Wednesday night. I'll make sure you took the Cavs with five and a half <laughs> spread. But I have the Cavs winning one twelve ninety four. I think the shooters play well. The Warriors let off just enough. Yeah, I think it's just a good shooting night for the Cavs. I think it's like a. Hey, look, we're still around. I think they shoot well. I mean, that's like Warriors a really get lazy. good shooting night for the Cavs that's and yeah. a really bad shooting night for the Warriors. I think the Warriors just get lazy. Huh. 
I and told I, you guys, I'm not counting them out. You said don't count them out. I'm not. I have faith in them. I mean, I, I, I totally again. agree, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout like that. I've got I've got Cavs in by three. Um, I think LeBron, he'll not allow himself to get swept. And he'll have a historic game, and I think he will be the favorite for the finals MVP after this game, even if they lose the series. I'm no way. Curry getting it. I, I agree with that. Like, if we looked at finals MVP after these past two games, I'd give it to Curry. But yeah. I'm talking about after... Game three. After a hypothetical game three, he's going to put like 95. Like high key 95. Maybe even touch triple. Digits. If he touches 50 again, I think you got to look at it. No. If he averages. Well, if 40, they don't pull out a game. 12 and, 12, and he doesn't win a game. If he wins so, a game, yes. No. You do not give somebody a loser in five. If he loses in five, I'm not giving him the MVP. Okay. If he wins two. Yeah. I'll give you that. Six is a debate. Five's not. No way I can give it to a guy that lost in five. I would. No way. About he should have won it two years ago then, not this year. Curry's playing like an MVP. Last, 2015, they had no one playing like an MVP. Like, they played fine, and they were good. But, like, when they lost, yeah, and Iguodala got it. 50. I mean, he played really, really, really well, but, like, he didn't put up 50. And then... But he should have been the MVP that year. I know. Curry's I playing with the MVP. You can't snub Curry every finals MVP when he earned it this year. I mean, yeah, but... He earned it. I, I, Curry no, I earned understand. the MVP. I understand. I told you right now. These past two games, if if Curry plays like that, plays like that with, they only score ninety four points, and you're still going to. What if he still has thirty? He won't have thirty if they score ninety four. What if he puts up twenty four and shoots six of seven from the three point line, six of eight? He won't. But I'm just saying, like he can play well. Like, and I'm just saying, and they have to. Get to six for me to think about. If LeBron LeBron destroys the Warriors, like you say that that he will, um, in game three. I, mean, I, I don't think it's put up a fifty point triple double to do it. I think they can just shoot well. But I mean, still doing that to the Warriors in the finals, I think you that alone can give him some looks for the finals. I think no, I, I think don't. after Game Three, he will be the favorite, we'll especially see. if if he does what he we'll see what you're saying. All right, he we will, will see. Favorite. I don't see it. I'm, I, take, I'm taking the Warriors one twelve one oh nine. We both think one twelve. Dan, do you think it's gonna be one twelve game too? <laughs> Sure, let's say 112, 109. That's funny. Yeah. Cavs. I like oh. it. Okay, let's <laughs> move on uh, to some NBA rumors. Rumor has it that the NBA is going to experiment with a challenge flag in this year's Summer League. You guys like it? I didn't read the article, so like I might be missing stuff, but like, how the hell would this work? Like, Where are they going to throw it? What's challengeable? What's not? We don't even know what's reviewable at this point. Like, how are we going to know what's challengeable? Like, they can't just throw it on the court. Like, what if they're playing? Like, yeah. it's just like a weird... There's a lot of questions but, I have before they make this a thing. I mean, once we figure that out, I think I, I'd like it once they figure that out, but... But, like, why not just have, like, a challenge signal? Like, why not just, like, go like this if the coach does it? Like, it's just, like, why? Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, yeah. it's just weird. Like, the flag I mean, concept. It was, like, the NFL, like, you can throw it on the field and it's, like, fine. But, like, yeah. NBA doesn't, like, stop. Like, you can, like, LeBron can be dribbling I mean, the ball and sure throw the flag out. Flag. Like. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I said. That, yeah. That's, that's they're what gonna, said. They're going to try it in the summer league. I'm excited. Like, I can't wait to see like Kyle Kuzma going up for a three and you see a flag. Just like fly under. Like, oh, shoot. I, I think it's really funny, but it, it probably won't work. I mean, there's just way too many dangers with sleep, slipping. Uh, if the coach throws it at the ref, that's an easy yeah. tee. And, I mean, the refs already there's give just out so many way question too many marks. easy tees. Um, and then, like, free game stoppage, too. If you want to stop the game, don't have a timeout, throw your challenge flag. Like, that's just well, isn't that a rule in the NFL? Yeah, like you'll can't. lose a timeout if. Yeah. Well, is that a rule in the NFL? If you lose if you timeout, don't have a timeout, I don't think you can challenge. I don't know. I don't think you can. I actually don't know. Wow. Let's get Zach on. Mm. We'll make Zach look it up. He's oh. not here today. Oh. <laughs> no, we're sure not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last time. Be anyway, uh, the NBA has also had some discussions about a four to five round draft. What do you guys think about that one? I'd like it as a draft junkie because it lets yeah. me like study more and like get into it more. But like, it's going to dilute the talent in the basketball. You're going to see fourth round picks playing when second round picks are barely successful. Yeah. So like, I think it dilutes a lot of the talent. But hey, if they did it this year, Jello would get drafted, and I, the process might I mean, be completed for the balls. So like, I wouldn't complain if it happened this year. I mean, so like, I just think it, I think it's not. It can't happen. Right. There's no point. I mean, they brought it down to two for a reason. And most of the second rounders are never that great. Yeah, like you like three. Not to mention the undrafted players. So like, like name good undrafted players. Jeremy, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> That's Go all ahead. I can name. Dylan, my you talk. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> anyway, I think it would be a great idea. 
if they allowed high school players in and made the G League a better feeder system because I would love to see the G League uh, become. I like think it'd be b- cool, like baseball. Like if you're in the minor leagues, you can like go get redrafted. Or however that works, where like you can like go get redrafted. I mean, like if you're in the G League, like go enter the draft again. You know what I mean? Like that whole like I don't know how it all works, like the specifics of it, but like well, I'm guys like I, you I can don't... definitely get oh, redrafted. Yeah, 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 I think you do. It's if your contract expires after so long. I think it's like five years, and. You did not go to the MLB, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Like yeah. I think that'd be cool. Like you can go get redrafted. So you see guys like I don't really know, like and I, someone off the top of my head, but like say even like Evita Zubas or Tom McBrien, like they get drafted by Lakers, don't play, whatever. Then who's the team that needs a center? Like the the Cavs go pick him up because they don't want Thompson, and he ends up like I don't know. I think it'd be cool. <laughs> that you can just like redraft guys. Like I think that'd be kind of cool. I'm anyway, I think talking. I think a four or five round draft would work. Uh, if they let high school players in uh, and made the G League a better deal, a uh, bigger deal. Dan, sorry, continue. I just Goodness. this is Stop big news. Why am I totally wrong? JJ Berea, bro. Ah, that's dang. your dude. Secret weapon, <laughs> anyway, Jeremy Lin. But it it would be it be it would be weird because like second round picks, like teams already sell those. Um, obviously, they're not a big deal to NBA teams already, so imagine, like, a fifth-round pick. Like, what is a team going to do with that if they already just sell and basically give away their second-round picks yeah. today? Yeah. Wesley Matthews, right. Jose Calderon, who's a baller, Udonis yeah, has he's long. a lot in the finals. He's probably young. Like, when he was young, he was a baller for Toronto. He shot 48% from three. Uh, Udonis Haslam, my boy. Okay. Avery Johnson. Bruce Bowen and Ben Wallace. I didn't know Ben Wallace was undrafted. He was a stud. He was so good. But yeah, I mean, obviously, th- this is like really. a rare situation. Yeah. It's just like it's just like funny. I was looking it up, but yeah, I agree. I think just it would dilute the talent in the NBA. Anyway, um, so obviously Jerry C- or Brian Clanch though was a big uh, story. Jerry. His uh, his burner accounts on Twitter, but there hasn't been much progress lately. Are you guys concerned? Yeah, the latest thing we saw is some agency who's going to investigate him, some law firm. But, like, this is my thing. They have a top 10 pick this year. And, like, I'm saying this because, like, I've seen the Lakers have the 25th pick. They are literally working, like, five guys out every single day. And, like, to me, I'm like, this is so stupid. Like, we are probably not even going to keep this pick. Why are we working out, like, every guy ever? Like, Why not? Yeah. I don't – like, you – like, the Sixers – are have a top ten pick. They have two and a half superstars. If you want to count Fultz, if he gets healthy, so two and a half stars that are young and trying to mature. And this franchise has gone from stable to complete. And they're trying being, to get LeBron exactly, and trying to get stars. Like Kawhi. this has gone completely in a, such a bad situation. They need to start focusing on their pick, figuring out who the heck they want, and get some stability for these guys to build around. Yeah, I mean they're still looking into it. I mean, I, I and just I, dragged I, on. Like, They'll, I think they'll get it done before the important stuff happens, I guess. Yeah, by the draft? What if they don't get it done by the draft? Who makes that decision? I mean, the 10th pick's a big deal. Like, it's not like that's nothing. I don't know. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they definitely got to hurry, I think. Uh, the last time we talked about it on the show, though, it hadn't come out yet um, that it was most likely his wife. Uh, that, I mean, if it's his wife, he's still fired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was making sure I was definitely. Page. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's the last update that uh, we've really got from who was possibly behind the Twitter account. Uh, but like you said, either way, uh, he's got to go. And I think the number one guy for them to possibly hire is David Griffin if they want to get LeBron. The Cavs will. That actually be cool. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dan. I'm looking at this again. Birdman was also undrafted. Mm. That guy's a baller. He was. He got a five-year, twenty-one million-dollar contract from the Nuggets. Sorry, there's a fun fact for you guys. And he led the league, or second in the league in block in 2008. So a baller. And Chris Anderson, probably the best looking guy in the NBA. I think the only two things that that guy will ever be remembered for in the NBA is his tattoos and, and getting slammed on by Paul George. I don't remember that, but I remember the I mohawk and the him. tattoos. So, yeah, for sure. He's not good. Anyway, uh, Danny Green has a $10 million player option this year, and he says he doesn't know what he's going to do with it yet. You buying it? No. 
You got $10 million on a market that no one's going to pay you, and he's in a stable organization. Like, please find me a better situation. You're getting paid way over what you're worth, and you're at a stable organization. Guys would die for that situation. He's an idiot if he left. I mean, yeah, but I think he's still going to weigh all his options like everyone else does. So. I don't think there's, there's no a, options to weigh. I don't think there's any chance he lets it go. He'd be so stupid. Like, he might get a three year, $10 million contract yeah. if he. Like, legit, <laughs> he like, not agent. a joke, no, but I, legitimately might get a three year, like, $15 million. Literally no, cutting totally his salary agree, in half. I, he probably hasn't gotten all the offers yet. So. Yeah, I think he's definitely got to pick it up. But last thing for today <laughs> Skip Bayless last night on Twitter. Obviously, uh, after the game, like he does after every Cavs game, he went on some anti-LeBron tirade um, and said that uh, LeBron looked tired last night and criticized Chauncey Billups for saying that LeBron looked a little bit tired. And then he went on to say that nobody even thought about MJ being tired. Then some random guy on Twitter goes and finds one of his columns from June 13th, 1998, uh, which Skip Bayless said that Michael Jordan got tired in the finals. Number 23 tried and number 23 failed. So Skip Bayless, like usual, being an idiot on Twitter. And he got destroyed for it. I mean, yeah, it's funny. Like, I don't know who the heck went and found that, but it was funny. Just to see that, like, uh, I don't know. It was funny. Yeah. All right. I mean, he's just stupid like all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No news there. (laughs) Anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, Make sure you guys check us out on iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Periscope, and hopefully Spotify soon. We are working on that. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Sports Sermon, sports with a Z, and make sure you guys join us on Thursday after game three of the finals. Yep, see you guys.